It's a new song I wrote. Ready to hear my new song, Johnny Rob? I'm ready. I'm very excited. If you want the hottest new thing, you might get burned. Ouch. I just I didn't even know what I was gonna do. I just said those words. It was fun to say. I feel like that's the new Joe Bottomasa single. <laughs> Featuring. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that makes me laugh more than anything. Speaking of Joe Bonamassa, he, he and Eric Gales are on the cover of the yeah, latest drama. And Zach Persons in that magazine. And the same article is Joe and Eric. They asked their top guitar players who the, the guitar players are you should listen to. And Zach is one of the guitar players they asked to like say who he's listening to. Oh, nice. That's kind of neat. So he was in Super there somehow. Nice. So I was like, so check out that guitar. Is it Guitar World or Guitar Player? Or? I don't remember. It's one of the guitar magazines with Joe Bonamassa and Eric Gales. for Joe and Eric, yeah. Um, anyway, it's, 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 a cool, it's a cool magazine. If you read magazines, still, but you probably don't. It's on but digital. I think I think if you're not, you know, living in two decades ago, you could probably just read it online. Whatever, Johnny, you're getting off topic. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, if Sorry. you the newest hottest thing, so we're talking about boutique builders a lot of the times. Yeah, man. And um, this this came up with um, one of our favorite boutique builders just got some like egg on his face about something. Um, well, of, you know more of the detail. It was you know it was one of those good old uh, gear page. Oh, dreads. okay, never mind. So it's probably not real. No, just, I mean, probably. I mean, yeah. you know. I'm just kidding. It's, I'm sure there's some some factual stuff to it. So, I'm a big. I do love boutique builders. Sure. I, I'm on the phone with a lot of them every day, and I think they're wonderful people. Yep. I think the the best service that you can possibly get when buying a boutique piece though is through a dealer, hands down, 100%, almost every time. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a great experience going direct to the to the maker, but there's a lot of roadblocks you put in front of your face for a happy, successful transaction to take place when that happens. Um, that's sort of my opinion. Would you concur with this? I think that's true because, I mean, you know, you think if, if, it's, if it's somebody running their own operation, they're selling direct, they're building the guitars, they're, you know, I think with all these, these companies that are boutique companies, there's this critical point where, like, you need help, you can't quite afford to hire full-time help, right? Like, you know, you're in that thing where you're sort of, on the edge of, of things blowing up and maybe you're in overload, things are bound to get missed a little bit, right? Like, and I, you know, maybe communication isn't exactly what it should be. Most guys who are genius builders probably aren't like genius businessmen slash communicators. Well, let's back right? up. You were sort of getting to, there's, there's multiple facets. Yeah. So you sort of alluded to like several of them in there. So let's just break it down. Yep. First is the communication aspect. Everyone wants to talk to these builders. Right. I get that. These are sort of the rock stars of the building world. And they want to be able to talk with you to a point. You know, they <laughs> but they also want to be able to build guitars. That's you know? the, the key right. point. Like you, have to, you have to take into, into your brain, my brain too, like the time I'm on the phone within these guys, that's the time I'm taking Not away from building them guitars. building guitars. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, and then you have to compound that by every person with an order. However many orders you. there are. If they all want it. That's the idea of, so you have a, it's not, it's not a middleman idea, it's just, it's a relationship. Like these relationships yeah. I have with these boutique builders that we work with directly, that we have launching out soon as well, some new ones that are super exciting. It's a very personal relationship. Well, well that, I was going to say that is the relationship, right? That is the, you know, the idea is that we pick up some of those things so they can build guitars. Right? And, like, and the idea is too, is like you might talk with these builders through the dealer if the dealer has a great relationship with them, but it's like a, it's in a way that it's not going to be a irritating the builder, right. um, irritating you as well as a, an end user and player of this guitar because like you're going to call and you're not going to get called back. You're going to leave messages and you're not going to get a message back maybe because these people are somewhat crazy and eccentric sometimes. <laughs> or just legitimately crazy busy really really busy not saying that people that that not that that is an excuse for if you've given someone money they should blow you off and not speak to you not saying that no but like as but, a guitar shop our job yeah. is to sell guitars and yes. to service the the in-betweens of all the makers and the people that want to buy these guitars our job is not to build guitars a no. guitar builder is the job is to build guitars when they take on all these other hats something suffers yeah and it's going to be either the communication or the build and that's where we step into sort of phase two of this conundrum the the build can sometimes not be perfect from a boutique builder. We, I, I would say that across almost every boutique piece I've seen. I think that's true. There's there's issues in some ways, but that's also part of what I find is the magic if the issue is manageable. That there's art being put in this guitar and it's a man building a guitar and right. a woman building this guitar and it's just not it's not a it's not a mechanized machine. Yeah. It's not just a assembly line of CNC things. That, that being are said, perfect. sometimes there are issues that are beyond art, and it's a true mistake. 
Sure. And it's, and it's something that as the seller of this guitar, we are the guardians of and the yep. gatekeepers for both your happiness with said guitar and the builder's ability to build guitars and know when he makes a guitar that isn't up to standards. That's right. It's our job to communicate that. And I've had that happen with boutique people that I work with and it's okay. And I'm like, this guitar is bad. You're a bad boy. You know? No, I mean, <laughs> and it's never that they're trying to push off this shoddy work. Like, like you said, things just get missed sometimes. So it's nice to have, if you're a one man show, really tough to have perfect, you know, quality control. Maybe if you're trying to pump out hundreds of guitars or however many guitars. Well, and the, and the gear page, unfortunately, and fortunately is a great place for people to um, express their concerns, gripe, share ideas, yeah. um, try to find out new information about other builders, but it can be poisoned so easily because of the sort of idea of the more views and clicks it gets towards the end of each year, the giveaways and whatnots and all that sort of compounds on itself. So if you right. negative always feeds more. We can watch, sure. If you watch the news or any media, the feel-good story does not get the most clicks. It's always when, you know, Biden did this or Trump did that or somebody did, you know, it's, that's what everybody wants to watch. Or I think we're all burned out about anything else. So I don't watch the news at all anymore. They, they've done their job and they've turned me off of it entirely. But um, <laughs> Now you're cold and bitter. No, no, and no I'm just happy. Apathetic. I'm happy all the time. I just walk around. So that, that, that's another facet of the, right. we are the gatekeepers of both both sides happiness in there. That's true. And it's and then the, the final one, it really is it sort of combines all that together. It's the the time and fulfillment aspect of when you when you place an order, we can help you sort of guide that order with the help of the builder. Yeah. Too. And like it's a three part deal. So you like the more the you've had those those three I I love these three units in there. Because like we're we're your advocate. If it's a good guitar shop, we're the advocate of the buyer of this guitar. Yes. We're not just trying to sell you guitars as many as we can. That's what other brands are for. Yes. What other shops are for, too. There's like the big box shops, that's their job. Sell as many guitars as possible, you know. Sort of protect the Be brand. damned. Just go. Just sell yeah. stuff. Get it out. You know, you turn and burn. Like, that's the idea. We're smaller shops that really focus on relationships don't do that. They don't. They can't afford to. They don't have the time to. Um so it's a relationship. It's and it's it should be fun, and yes. that's the key point of this whole thing. It needs to be a fun experience where you get to enjoy every process from talking with the dealer, talking with the builder, getting it all together, changing some stuff, putting it the final order in, the waiting time, communicating with that dealer. Hey, where are we in the queue? Let me let me find out. Yeah. You know, instead of like <laughs> communicate with the maker, where where are we in the queue? Go blank yourself. You know. Yeah, I'm lo you're losing it. You're off the queue now. You're in the back because you upset me. It's just... Um, Ouch, that would be rough. That, that was... <laughs> I'm so, one of my favorite favorite boutique builders. Like He, he has people like bother him a lot. And, like, and, they're, just, and they're nice. They just want to know. It's not a bother. They just want to know well, where they are. That's where it helps the maker as well, right? Because it, you know people, even if they are nice about it, that would be tricky if you were trying to... Produce things, build things, well, craft things. And I things, know yeah. that if, like, if if you have someone who's bothering you as the maker, if I was the maker, it, it would reflect in my work on that guitar. It, mm. it would, I would my my the the feeling. And I, I don't know. I'm a little bit maybe hippy dippy sometimes, but like the soul I put in that guitar would be not as positive, and I would just want to get it at, get it done. Get you're it like, out. I'm just just get done with get this. Get done, one. good. Yeah, that's done. out. And yeah. maybe even because you, you're like, okay, this person's been waiting. I gotta gotta hurry. Well, it's also the dealer, their job is to give a realistic expectation of delivery. Whereas, you know, when you're selling it from directly, a lot of times I've seen this, like, oh, it'll be in six months. It's three years later. Yeah. Let's just, let's meet in the middle somewhere. And then so we can manage those expectations as well. It's, um, it's a tricky balancing act, but it's because it is tricky. I love these guitars. I love those yes. amps. We love mule guitars. We like yeah, mule yeah guitars that's, that's one yeah. of the things that sort of spawned this conversation. Yeah. So, so we had a great one come through the shop. It was here and gone before we could even... Yeah, you get to play it really. It was just, you know, Gosh, it was a good one. Yeah, great guitar. Um, I was so baffled by like the dots, like they're in the wrong fret. And then that turns out that's what they do. I was like, I don't understand. I was so confused because that's how you, it's be it was a beautiful instrument. But um, that's our thoughts. I think it's um, so it is. It's sort of a a buyer beware. Like when you make your choice to go down this road, and when we also saw it with um Dano Caster, he's like, now he's going back to direct. Well, because he sales. just announced like I, yeah. I think it was within the month. He's like, I'm so. done. Yeah, and then now he's back to selling it, which 
that that I don't know the whole story of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know the behind the scenes. Like as a dealer, that would sort of hurt my feelings if I'd spent years investing and building that brand with you to like, hey, where people can buy this through us and now us and one other place alone exclusively right. or a small dealer network. Because yeah. like you do, we spend like time, money, and heart and soul putting these things together. Because otherwise, it's it's a lot of energy on something that's a, an unproven thing at first. Right. And like, if you help, I don't know. That's that sort of caught me as funny. But I don't know the, I don't know the behind. It. Just just saw it happen this morning, and I was like, oh, yeah. surprising. I thought these were gone. Right. But, you know, I wish him the best, regardless, and I hope he's um. I mean, he's you know, he's been around for a while. He's got a good people. People love his guitars, so they're great guitars. I play. Them. You know. Yeah, Great agreed. Talk. Yeah, had some friends Thanks, who swear by them. So. so those are our thoughts. When you're going down that boutique world, if you want the hottest new thing, just you, it, it, you could get slapped around a little bit. Too. And why maybe maybe a dealer is not so much the middleman. Maybe it's a good protection in it, some ways. The, the the dealer is your advocate. Yeah. In this and um, and will hold your hand through this whole process. Which it, is tricky when you can only buy certain certain guitars like this direct. Who knows? It's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. We have no answers. <laughs> Just conversations. <laughs> That's all we got, though. I mean, like, thank you for joining us. And Happy New Year once more, because I think we're solidly into the new year now. We are solidly in. But yeah, anyways, yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments. I got to say thank you to John Fox. He sent me, like, every Garth Brooks song ever recorded in the box set. So that if I ever have gigs where I have to learn Garth Brooks songs again... I will not have to search the internet for for good old Garth's. That is, I'm still music. baffled that stuff's not out there. I th well, apparently it's on Amazon. My wife told me. Okay, I but anyway. But thank you, John. That was amazing. That, I that really is, appreciate that. That is now. amazing. It and I love every bit of that. It makes me happy. Just the fact and, that people send us things. Another yeah. thank you to everyone who's been watching this channel. Yeah. For the past um, couple of years, it's been it's been a pleasure getting to meet you and share this time with you and have have a good conversation and. Um, Nice cup of coffee or tea or whiskey, whatever you're drinking. I don't know. Um, no, seriously, thanks for joining us and thanks for just being part of the family. We really enjoyed it. It means a lot to us. It does. We hope to see you soon. There you go. Hit like and subscribe. If you have not, don't forget Silver Sky Giveaway, Podcast, Next Great American Guitar Builder, all the things you guys know. Thanks again. See you later.